let's look at a live demonstration of SimCenter AIMSIM. In this demonstration, I'm going to show a hydrostatic transmission example. And we'll build a functional hydrostatic transmission, do an analysis of the dynamic system behavior, and then make a design change to improve its response. Then I will show a real life hydrostatic transmission application uh, in a tractor. This live example will demonstrate the ease of use in the SimCenter AIMSIM GUI and quick analysis capabilities and trade off studies that you can do, as well as the scalability of this solution to a full system analysis on a real application example. So let me now switch to the AIMSIM software. Here we have the SimCenter AIMSIM interface. On the right side, you can see in a list of libraries that we have available in SimCenter AIMSIM from physical uh, based libraries to application specific libraries. Now for our current hydro hydrostatic transmission, I will not be needing all the libraries. So I'm going to remove the libraries that I don't need from my list so that I only have the hydraulic library, a 1D mechanical and a signal control library. For my hydrostatic transmission, I need some hydraulic components. First, I'm going to define a fluid definition so I know in my system what type of fluid uh, I'm using. Then I need a pump and a motor. And in parallel to my pump, I have a relief valve right here. Then, as you may see, the different components they have ports. And each port has, uh, it's a physical port, so it has a, an, an input and output, and they need to be connected before I can go to the next step in my model. So the way I'm doing that here is I'm going to put some nodes in here so I can connect the pump to my relief valve and then the relief valve to the motor and back to the low pressure side here. And then altogether they have, uh, Fluid, a fluid reservoir that I'm going to represent here by you know, a zero pressure uh, source, a zero bar gauge pressure. What is remaining on the left and on the right is the mechanical ports. So on the left side, on the left side, I'm going to drive my pump with a motor, and then initially I'm going to specify a constant speed for my motor. And on the right side, going back to the mechanical library. I'm going to specify an inertia load and um, I'm going to plug that with zero torque. Potentially I can add a gearbox or other loads to it. I'm keeping it simple for now. Now that I've developed my sketch, I can actually go through the next steps. The next steps are submodel mode, parameter mode and simulation mode. So the total process, the whole process takes four steps and I've just built the sketch. So now we're in submodel mode. I can go ahead and select the highlighted components and define what the submodel, what submodel I want to use for it. And a submodel um, defines the set of equations that are behind each component, from an ideal fixed displacement pump all the way with efficiencies to a flow ripple or external gear pump. There are different levels of complexities. Um, for now, I'm going to use the simplest one for all the components so that I can use one click Premier submodels and select all the submodels. The next step is to set the parameters. And depending on um, your settings, there will be a parameter and a variable window that are popping up on the right side in parameter mode. These windows can be moved around to whatever location in the screen you want. If you can close them and reopen them. Um, in this case, you can see that I have selected a pump, and you can see the pump has some parameters, a displacement and then a typical speed, um, a fluid index that refers to the fluid properties defined here in the fluid. I'm going to make some parameter changes here. So for the check valve or the, the pressure relief valve, I'm going to change the correcting pressure to 180 bars. And for the hydraulic line that I have here, I'm going to change the length to four meters. And then for my inertia, I'm going to add friction. And then in the friction parameters, I'm going to just define the viscous friction coefficient. 
what you saw here, uh, diameter and length, they are metric units by default. You can change the units to feet or inches, whatever units you have. You can customize that uh, the way you like it. Once I've done setting the parameters, I just need to change this one here, uh, where I define the constant speed for my pump. Then I can go to simulation mode. When I'm going to simulation mode, it actually compiles the set of equations that are formed by connecting the different components together. Once that is gone, I can actually run a simulation. Click the play button to run a simulation, and then I can look at the results. The results are displayed on the bottom right in the variables window. Now, in this case, my pump is rotating at a constant speed of 1500 RPM which I can easily show by dragging that variable into my sketch window or the model window, and it will pop out uh, a plot. Then I can go to my motor and uh, plot the speed as well. As you can see, the motor starts at zero speeds, ramps up, and oscillates quite a bit before it reaches the same speed as my pump, because they have the, an equivalent displacement and 100% efficiency. Then we can look at the other uh, results of the model. In this case, I'm going to look at the pressure. And you can see here that in the beginning, the pump is delivering a lot of pressure, a lot of flow, but my motor is not moving. So there's a lot of uh, pressure being built up, uh, up to the 180 bar, in which case the pressure relief valve opens up. Then at some point, my motor is like, going fast and overshooting and there's a vacuum inside that line so in fact i get cavitation here which could be very bad for my system so there's some problem here with my model so that i get cavitation now what i'm going to do now is going to duplicate the model and then find alternatives on controlling this model uh, so that i prevent cavitation and potentially even prevent all the power loss through my pressure relief valve could be a safety valve and not a normal startup operation. And for this model, I'm just going to apply a filter between my control signal, 1500 RPM, and the actual motor speed to simulate a slower speed up of my pump speed. So I add that, go back to parameter mode, and then I can see there's a natural frequency, damping ratio, gain that I can. Um, and specify now because I changed the model, I have to recompile again. Let me do that real quick. Okay, and now I have to choose what is my natural frequency and damping ratio. So Ameson makes it easy to do the analysis. What I can do is I can go to a study manager and then drag the natural frequency into that study manager parameter window, then go to the studies tab and check that parameter say we're going to vary it and I'm giving it some value so one hertz as the base value with step size of 0.2 I'll do four runs below five above All right and now so what I can see if I show the design matrix that is actually doing 10 runs with an increase in frequency starting from 0.2 to 2 and then from here I can click start run and it will automatically do all 10 runs for me in my case, it does them all in parallel, so it's all very quickly. And then I can look at the pressure, which was the main, uh, main uh, interest that I had. I have applied all the pressure of all the different, different runs. You can see a lot of noise that is being generated. Instead of looking at all this noise, I can do some post-processing in this post-processing tab. And here I can drag in the pressure. But instead of the individual pressure trace, I'm going to say I want to plot the global minimum, which is the showing me the amount of cavitation that I would get. I'm going to say I got a negative value so I can see the absolute uh, the cavitation value. I can plot that for all my 10 different runs that I had, and then I can see the values. That's still not very clearly easy to read on when I get cavitation, although I can see here that for the first six runs, I do not get cavitation. And then seven, eight, nine, ten, I do get cavitation. 
and then here I can see that it is with uh, a higher frequency, so faster response, faster speed up of my pump that I get cavitation, which is to be expected. There's another way where I can easily um, visualize that by using cross results. In the cross results window, I can drag in any, any variable, in this case, the post-processing variable. And when I plot this, it will create a bar chart for all the runs that I've done. And here you can clearly see that, okay, the minimum pressure is zero bar gauge for the first six runs, and then run seven, eight, nine, and 10, I do get cavitation. So this is a, an easy way to specify, okay, what is the pressure that I see? In the same way, I can do a maximum pressure to see if I, uh, if my relief valve is being act activated or not. So then I can say here, I see cavitation. Here I can see the maximum pressure. And when a depth hits 180 bar, which is in case four and higher, I'm engaging my pressure relief valve. So what this tells me is option one, two, or three would be best in terms of the energy consumption, because I don't want to lose much in my relief valve, uh, as well as preventing cavitation. And uh, as a reminder, one, two, three was 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 hertz. So what I'm going to do here is I say, okay, I want I want my pump and my motor to speed up as quickly as possible still, so I'm gonna select 0.6 Hertz. Okay. Then going back to doing just the, the standard run instead of the, the batch run of all the design options. So now I run this simulation, make sure it's selecting my reference run and I can look at my shaft speed, which is now of the pump. So this is now the control pump speed and then I can compare that with actual speed of my motor, which you see it's still oscillating, but only slightly around the nominal speed. There's no high overshoots. And in particular, if I look at the pressure in this condition, now you can see that I don't reach the 180 bars as uh, expected. And I also don't get cavitation, doesn't get below zero bar. So this could be um, a good design for my system. All right. So this is basic hydrostatic transmission. I can expand this, add more control valves, etc., to it, and end up with a system like you see here, which is a tractor. In this case, I modeled the vehicle itself, the tractor, and the transmission with different clutches. And as you may see, I got a, a motor here, and I got a motor here, so two hydraulic motors. I got two pumps, one basic pump and one main pump here. They are driven directly from the engine speed, which is in this case considered to be a constant value. And based on that engine speed and, and vehicle target and actual vehicle velocity, it's controlling the displacement of these motors. So the motors are variable displacement. It's also controlling the clutch actuation uh, and uh, pump speed, uh, pump displacement. So there's a control system along with the hydraulic system, as well as the mechanical transmission and the vehicle, so multi-physics. And in this model, I can run a simulation that uh, runs pretty quickly too, in a few seconds. Uh, I'm only doing a 15 second simulation. And then I can look at some of the results. So look at a pump outlet pressure, pump inlet and outlet pressure. I can look at, uh, whether I get cavitation anywhere, I can look at the actual vehicle speed. And if I create some of these plots with, for example, here the shaft speed, um, pressure here, pressure there, I can save this plot with the model. And that is what is done with this model. I've saved some plots that I can open up and look at the results. So here you can see actual the vehicle speed and the target speed and make sure they're closely matching. I'm going to zoom in and see that there is, there's a little discrepancy here, an oscillation that's happening while my uh, 
motor one and motor two speeds are, are changing. They're further analyzed by fractional displacement. In this case, it's showing that this fractional displacement of the, the motors and the pumps is a function of the vehicle velocity. The clutch engagement is a function of the vehicle velocity. We'll get some other uh, plots like the power analysis. So you can look at what is my, my engine power required, the cooling pump, the power pump requirements, etc. And furthermore, uh, with these models, if once it is validated and uh, uh, tested, I can do a full power analysis. And this is post processing the results of the APES model. If I rewind this, I can animate what the power flow is in the system, how much is going into uh, the hydraulic motor, the hydraulic pump, how much is mechanical dissipated, and then overall, what is the driveline efficiency and what's my vehicle velocity. So this is a very nice way of visualizing um, the results in APSIM as well. All right, let me switch back to the presentation. What I've showed you is an example of a hydrostatic transmission. The ease of use on putting a model together, changing parameters, doing a quick analysis and trade-off study of, in this case, the, the startup speed of the pump, uh, and make that design change and analyze the result to pick the right design choice. And then I showed real-life application of the uh, tractor with a full hydrostatic transmission, two separate pumps, and a transmission that's uh, controlled by a controller that's defining the displacement um, or the fractional displacement of the pumps. That really is a multi-physics system simulation model. Thank you for your attention. And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them.